Hey everyone, welcome to my live stream where I answer your questions. So do see the chat box, whether your cell phone or desktop, ask your question and just kindly be patient. I will get to them. And the way that I'll start this off is by looking at the questions on my YouTube channel. I apologize for being a, a little bit slow to respond, but I do my best to get to them. Um, let me just make sure this thing is working. I don't see any viewers yet. Uh, live viewers, live viewers. Someone let me know if we're live. Oh, there we go. We're live. Okay, perfect. Welcome, and wel welcome guys. Welcome, Kim. Um, let me know where you're from and drop a question. So somebody asked, what's the difference between um, qualium mind and alpha brain? And I'll assume that you're talking about the normal alpha brain, not the uh, black label product. So the major difference with, between qualium mind and alpha brain, or you can even say the rest of the other nootropic blends, is that qualium mind has over 25 ingredients, whereas the majority of nootropic blends are going to have maybe five to 10. I think alpha brain has about 12. So what, so is your really going to be able to get a good idea of as, as far as like what nootropics can do for you for, um, um, individuals that are a little bit skeptical about nootropics and are wondering, is this even a good, um, investment to begin with a good idea for them is probably to get on something like quality of mind, because then they can really test it. But the challenge when it comes to making a nootropic stack similar to quality of mind is that it's going to be very, very expensive to think of buying like over 20 ingredients individually, uh, either being powders or pills, it's going to be expensive. So the best thing to do is if something like quality of mind is working well for you is um, find out what those few ingredients are that are responsible for the most of the effect as far as you being more productive and you being more effective and perhaps go out and purchase those. So quality of mind, it's going to be more effective. Um, however, more nootropics often does come with more side effects. So alpha brain is a, like, it's a nice kind of lighter supplement. A lot of people notice that, um, after taking alpha brain for about 30 days, their memory being a bit better and, uh, perhaps a little bit more focus. And let's jump on to the next question. Uh, what's going on guys? Where's everyone from? We've got Australia here. I presume, I presume, um, a lot of Canadians, Americans, probably not a lot of the UK crowd, given that you're five hours ahead. Uh, do you know about solbutyamine? Yes, I do. I've not tried it yet. Um, I think I'm going to just like lay back when it comes to sol solbutyamine, see what happens in the next few years. If there's not a lot of like negative side effects reported, then it's something that I may, I may consider taking because the majority of the, new, of the nootropics that I'm taking, they've been around for quite a while. And, um, you know, uh, just give me some, gives me some comfort knowing that there's no long-term risks. California, baby. Very cool. And a similar, similar thing to be said to about, about um, Bromantane. Are there any legal alternatives to rewire brain like active shrooms? Rewire brain. Um, interesting. So, I mean, perhaps if you've gone through something bad, like uh, some sort of trauma, maybe a, he a head injury, lion's mane is known to be pretty effective. Um, a couple other good nootropics are uh, Pramorastam as well as Paracetam. And then it becomes really important for you to make sure you're getting your choline, whether that's through egg yolks or alpha GPC or CCDP choline. I think even if you're not on uh, nootropics um, like the racetams, definitely do consider getting a choline supplement in there because your focus is going to be better and you'll feel like you um, have lesser of a need for breaks during the day. It's one of the most challenging things right now, I think across all industry is just being able to focus. There are so many distractions. Um, especially with technology, our attention spans are getting shorter. So the better you can do when it comes to like focusing or time blocking or, um, you know, simple practices like turning your phone on airplane mode, it becomes very, very difficult. So choline can definitely help with that. What do you, I'm trying to switch, um, modafinil for any other natural option. Also is I'm drinking coffee. Is that a good nootropic? When it comes to the natural options of modafinil, you can find um, alternatives, however, they won't work for the whole day. Like modafinil will like the old, like the one alternative to modafinil to consider is phenylparacetam. But the issue with phenylparacetam is it's something you sh probably shouldn't be taking every day. You shouldn't really be taking it even, um, two days consecutively. But what's good about phenylparacetam is it, you know, you just ingest it once sometime in the morning, it'll last the whole day with other nootropics that can kind of give you that modafinil like feeling, although maybe three to four hours, you'll notice the effects. So I typically like taking L tyrosine, something like, um, 500 milligrams of L tyrosine along with hundred milligrams of caffeine. 
It'll work uh, for about a few hours. It feels like monophenol and that it will be mood uplifting. You'll be stimulated. You'll get not only mental energy, but physical energy as well. And I have actually made um, a video on the alternatives to monophenol. Of course, one being adrafinol. So the way adrafinol feels is similar in terms of like the focus. Um, you'll find that it's a lot easier to multitask. And like you can, you know, make these nice transitions from uh, doing one kind of like, you know, one style of work to another, like nice, simple transitions versus typically when you're working on something like, um, let's say you're typing out emails and for you to get into the state and the focus of like making phone calls, it'll take a few minutes for you to like mentally transition. But with midafinal, you can just go back and forth. So you get that same benefit when you're taking a drafinal. However, with a drafinal, it comes with a lot of irritability. So sometime after like six to seven hours of ingesting a drafinal, the way it feels is um, people will uh, just really like get on your nerves, feel very impatient. And yeah, probably not the best thing out there socially. Very ni nice to see more people jump in here. Let me know uh, where are you guys from and glad you could join me here. I'm trying, to I'm trying to not make these too late, but it's difficult finding like a time to do these live streams where it's convenient for everyone, right? Have you, um, what happens if you take too much lion's mane? I've kind of experimented with that, taking too much of it. No real like negative side effects, but with lion's mane, it can be somewhat demotivating. So the demotivating nootropics out there, I used to think there were only three, like lion's mane, um, ashwagandha, and bacopa. But just as of lately, I've noticed there's probably a fourth one, and that's L-theanine. So watch out for that video. I'm going to be releasing it sometime soon on the um, L-theanine negative side effects. So with lion's mane, um, as a result of kind of making you more inquisitive and making you more curious, you can lo like lose focus of your, uh, you can say like short-term tasks, your short-term pri priorities. So watch out for that with lion's mane. Um, you'll find yourself you know, just wanting to make conversation with anyone who's maybe like outside of your focus. So be, uh, so be mindful of that. Although you feel healthier, you, you'll probably get better sleep. Some people notice more energy when they're taking lion's mane, but I would presume the people that notice the like energetic benefits from lion's mane are probably people with pretty severe anxiety to begin with. Kind of similar to L-theanine. Um, I was looking at an L-theanine study and what they actually found with L-theanine was such that it worked to improve reaction time in individuals that had anxiety, but for the individuals that didn't have anxiety, they didn't notice any benefit whatsoever. Um, so let's, um, sorry about that. Let me just turn that off. What do you think about Jinko slash Bacopa slash L-tyrosine? I don't think you really need the Jinko. It doesn't, it shouldn't do much for you. Some people notice a benefit. I personally don't. Bacopa and L-tyrosine, L-tyrosine is nice in that it can kind of counteract that demotivation effect you get from Bacopa. So that could be a good stack in terms of like focus, uh, memory. Pretty good to start uh, to um, for like starting to study. Uh, you know, in terms of Bacopa is going to help you with like the learning retention, the recall, all of that. And L-tyrosine is going to give you like the focus and the energy. I don't really notice any like um, cognitive benefits when I take L-tyrosine personally, but I want to hear um, you, your thoughts, guys. Is it like, L-tyrosine just helps you with energy or do you actually notice, you know, uh, you're sharper, you're able to solve more sophisticated like problems? Um, let me know about that. Is your, an, oh, I apologize. I haven't been clicking these damn comments. So you guys don't even know what I'm responding to. So I'm going to start doing that. Um, is your, in your opinion, is nicotine a nootropic? Probably, yes. Although horribly overrated. I don't know why it gets so much hype. You literally feel like you get some, like a spike of motivation a spike of confidence that will last for like five to 10 minutes. And then when it's out of your system, you don't really feel good. You just feel like, what the heck was that for? So it's nice in the sense of when you take it, it will kind of like shift your mindset just for a second. And that shift of, shift of your mindset is enough for you very often to like focus on other kinds of work or some, some way in which I like personally using it is when it's the middle of the day and I've kind of lost track of like, okay, what do I really need to get done in, in the day? Um, I'll, I'll take a little bit of it. And then what I notice is suddenly I'm refocused and I'm like, okay, if I do these three things, these three things, I will finish the day feeling really good about myself. So that's pretty cool. Um, tribulus or long jack for testosterone. Ooh, I'm probably going to say, um, long jack, but I'm learning lately that Tonkat Alley does need to be cycled often, you know, cycled out of your stack quite often. Whereas tribulus doesn't tribulus is something like I'm comfortable, I'm comfortable taking it let's say 330 days of the year, whereas Tonka, maybe like 250 days of the year. 
so it's tribulus lighter, but I found that it seems to improve my sleep and um Tonkat Ali, I think it did help with my sleep at the beginning, but afterwards not so much. What is the closest stack to Midnafinil currently on uh Vivant 70 milligrams? Very addictive. So go back. Um, I'm I will leave this live stream up, providing that it stays clean and people don't ask out of the line questions. So refer to like back uh maybe like three, four minutes ago, I talked about the alternatives to Midnafinil. But to touch on Vivance, and not only Vivance, but Concerta, um, Adderall, Ritalin. The issue with these with these is that they will overpower the majority of your nootropics, and more so, they'll keep you up at night. They'll, um, you could say, suppress your appetite. And the crash you get at the end of the day is really, really bad. With like Minafinil, it's not so much like a, a brain fog or a irritability crash. More so, it's just a headache, or that's for most people anyway. But you, you can kind of um, eliminate the headache to some extent um, with a lot of choline throughout the day and drinking a lot of water. Like I'm, guys, just don't sleep on drinking water. It's the best natural nootropic out there. How do, um, is moving on to the next question guys yeah don't don't hold back with your questions let's get through all of it let's get through a lot of material here i like to practice intermittent fasting but currently take tonkat alley would you have any solution to deal with the nausea on an empty stomach or would you suggest taking tonkat during lunch slash dinner philip that's a great question i've been wondering the same thing myself because i'm supplementing with tonkat alley and i typically do fast i really enjoy staying fasted throughout the day strategically using caffeine because one sec, I'm just going to move this up so you guys can see that comment, that big bulky comment. Uh, because what so is when you do fast, you um, you know, hunger can often make you more productive through a means of increasing adrenaline. And provided that you're not overly hungry, you're not stressed out, you're um, not dehydrated, it can really help with performance. So with Tonka Alley, the good thing is it's not stimulating for most people. So do take it with dinner. Even within a few hours of sleeping, you should be okay. But um, if you have like a sleep track or something, then you can play. Uh, you can pay close attention to that. So the typical practice I'm running now is something like 400 milligrams of Tonka Alley, which is a little bit of a higher dose. But I'm having that um, in the evening, like usually with my biggest meal on that works well. With Tonka Alley, you can try having it with a smaller meal. Um, it probably will still, it's still, it still will result in you feeling the nausea, feeling like you want to vomit. That's very common. But the one issue is when you're having it with too big of a meal is it can compete with other amino acids and, and, and other calories. Um, and you may not be able to get the same effect. Nicotine. Yes. Does affect acetylcholine. Can you talk about Pramiracetam? Pramiracetam is kind of like people are sleeping on it and, it's really expensive for some reason. It didn't used to be like that. So what you need to know about Pramiracetam is it's the one of the more subtle racetams, but will be responsible for you increasing your discipline, your work ethic. It's it's especially good for like repetitive, boring tasks. I remember, for example, um, when I got into the real estate industry somewhere about eight or nine years ago, no, about eight years ago, um, it was always you know difficult to make cold calls or prospect um, the like particular lead sources. But when I started using Pramiracetam, I could like effortlessly do it for four to five hours a day, even when I wasn't seeing the results. So very often, I mean, we will get some some drive, we will get some motivation when we see results. But Pramiracetam, it has this nice effect of like you don't need to see the results; you just need to trust the process, deal with the repetitious boredom like so effortlessly. And it was that moment that it hit me. It worked. And you'll find when you start ingesting Pramiracetam, it makes a big difference long term because you'll you'll maintain a better a better level of um, discipline throughout the course of the day, even in the evening. That's kind of how like discipline and willpower works, unfortunately, or that's that's what I believe. It starts off, you know, you start off the day and it's really, really high. And then slowly as the course of the day pr progresses, it um, diminishes, but not with the help of Pramiracetam. So the way that I'm typically taking it is 300 milligrams twice a day. Uh, just be mindful. You need to be a little bit patient with Pramiracetam. time. It will take uh, probably about a week and a half to work. Um, you may not feel alert. You may not feel like mental energy, kind of like how you feel with Oxyras time, but it is subtle. And if you have an objective way that you're keeping track of things, you'll definitely see a benefit, which is kind of like um, Nupept. The way um, I was on a call with somebody last week and I say like, and I was telling him when you take Nupept, just I mean, what you should notice is your business is going to start doing better. You may not necessarily feel anything, but you'll be saying to yourself, like, all that I know is that with Nupept, I'm making more money. And it's kind of like uh, Pramras time is too. So 
the the racetams are definitely responsible for me like definitely um making more money whereas the adaptogens more so better for having a good like a good overall life balance not feeling as much uh, stress during the day because stress management is a real thing and you really have to have those practices in your day uh, whether it's nootropics taking a break um uh, napping meditating walking your dog or whatever of course uh, making sure that you have a good healthy diet haven't been on the channel for over a year it feels well that's your fault mr sahil um can you do midafinal every day unfortunately yeah and and hey 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 dan you probably can although in your heart of hearts you know you shouldn't be uh what so is if you are taking you know if, if it is maybe like a very intense month for you you're juggling a lot of things you're not sleeping i can see why people would use would want to use midafinal every day but it just note that um get you know have some days without midafinal in your system and watch that your work in a lot of ways does become better you become better you become a lot more efficient you learn how to delegate when you're taking midafinal uh, just notice you seem to want to do these low dollar per hour activities and what so is in like your line of work then you probably have work which is like work which is going to pay you $100 an hour or $500 an hour. But when you're taking midafinal, you're tempted to, to do all kinds of work. You'll be doing data entry work that you can be easily delegating somebody else to for $5 an hour. And then you start doing it yourself. And then the worst part about that is you start to feel like you're worth $5 an hour, if that makes sense. So when you're not taking midafinal, you become just more um, st um, strategic about things because you're not working all the time. You'll be able to get some good snap in place and be, uh, you know, really just feel fulfilled in your in your work. I'm from New York. Awesome, John, and um, glad to have you here. It's nice seeing some names I've not been familiar with. Love from Toronto as well. Very cool. What's up, Philip? And yeah, for those of you who don't know, I'm here in Toronto, Canada, but I've been to the States um, three times so far this year and uh, been to um, London, England and Manchester, England. Views on go to cola, please. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't see what all the hype is about. Um, go to cola. It's been around for quite a while. Some people think it. Some people say it helps them uh, with their body composition, like building more muscle, losing fat. I've seen other people report that they sleep better. I was taking it and expecting that it may uh, somehow work to um, eliminate stress or reduce stress, but. I almost felt like I almost felt kind of uncomfortable with it. Almost like taking some bad forms of ginseng. With Panix ginseng, the only form I like is like the GS. I think it's GS five fourteen. Whereas the other forms of it, they seem like a worse version of rhodiola rosea. They may clear your mind a little bit, but it comes with this like uncomfortable, uh, stimulating feeling. And, and guys, don't mind giving this uh, live stream a thumbs up. I appreciate it and your support. And my next video I got coming out is on terkestrone. We're gonna talk about it and kind of. Really just clarify, is it worth taking or not? Because uh, terkestrone is one of the most talked about supplements, specifically at improving testosterone levels. So t stay tuned for that. It'll be coming later on this week. Thoughts on C-Max. I absolutely love C-Max. It's, um, it's like a more effective version of Nupept. What I like about C-Max more so than Nupept is C-Max does have studies showing that it increases BDNF more effectively than Nupept. Uh, with C-Max, though, one of the major reasons a lot of people stopped taking it and a lot of many um, brands stopped distributing it is because there were, um, I don't think there was any studies on this, but there are too many anecdotes about people taking it and it um, attributing attributing to hair loss. So unless you're somebody who's bald, you wouldn't care. But see, C-Max, how it feels is you're more productive, you're sharper, it works for a few hours, um, a little bit like, um, kind of like an extended release L-tyrosine. And as a result of taking it for like 30 days straight, yeah, you definitely feel just uh, like your word recalls better, your memory is better. It's, it's a pretty good new, nootropic. I was taking it for three to four years in building my business. And then as um, you could say brand stopped selling it, I couldn't find a good source. I just left it and it was fine. Um, the plosives on your mic are, are probable. Okay. A good nootropic for anxiety slash lack of motivation, please. Um, anxiety. Okay. So this is a bit tricky because anxiety, the, like very often the nootropics that are going to help you with anxiety are often going to actually, um, decrease motivation. So tails wants both. One I really like is called, um, it's called rhodiola rosea. So consider taking rhodiola rosea at a dose of 300 to 500 milligrams twice a day. So I'm typically good in the afternoon, once at 12 o'clock, then again at four o'clock PM when, um, 
L-tyrosine, it's an amino acid. That's one you as well want to consider. However, if you don't do well with stimulants, then L-tyrosine can actually result in you feeling worse. So when it comes to anxiety, just I identify like, why are you anxious? Are you anxious because of your lack of motivation? Because if that if that is the case, then L-tyrosine could be good. But if your anxiety is more like a social anxiety, just a general uncomfort, then that's very different than having like a worry of lack of motivation. So if it's something like that, then you may want to consider taking something like ashwagandha or lion's mane. I do recall um, there have been, you could say like instances in my career in which I was just very anxious in the sense like, okay, I had a good paycheck coming, but what after that? I didn't have leads. I had no optimism in my business. And then when I started taking lion's mane, especially um, under those conditions where you're a little bit anxious, you definitely feel it working. And it's an uplifting feeling because you suddenly feel present. You don't get concerned about um, where's, the, where's the next deal coming from. And this level of like unattachment and not being a too attached to the result, but being attached to the process makes you go about your work feeling good and knowing that you're learning from your mistakes. And the worst thing you can do is not take action. Does tribulus good for brain rewire and motivation? Brain, re brain rewire, well, this is the second time I've heard this term and nobody's ever asked it before. Um, or, or not or not so commonly. So tribulus good for motivation because it does um, almost directly impact testosterone, especially for people who have lower testosterone levels. So as a result of increasing testosterone, effort suddenly feels good. Effort feels good. You will want to take action because you see the result that happens as a result of it. So tribulus is something I noticed like when I um, was on CRT for a very short period of time. I got off of it and I was looking for any sort of supplement that could help me to boost my libido, boost my testosterone. Um, I was sure that I had low testosterone because my energy levels were low. I had no libido whatsoever. It was really hard to build muscle. And then that was pretty good in that I introduced tribulus. I also introduced uh, deaspartic acid. They didn't do too much, maybe a little bit of a benefit. And the rest of the nootropics didn't do much for me when it comes to like um, fenugreek, um, ashwagandha. There's a number of different supplements out there. I'm going to erase that one. Hide. Is five days on, two days off with Tomcat good? I'm going to actually say yes. Surprisingly, I I didn't think this practice would work when I first started taking Tomcat. I thought there could be more like a cumulative benefit for taking uh, for taking it for three for like three weeks, followed by a week straight. It's good, but the optimal way I think of taking it is taking on taking it for a longer period of time. But there are reports of people who are just using Tonkat on days when they're working out for whatever reason. Perhaps maybe they're taking it with a pre-workout meal and it's serving them. So it's good. It's probably not optimal. Um, my mom has severe insomnia. What nootropics help for insomnia? So basically falling asleep. Consider taking um, Z, um, ZMA is one, Tribulus like we talked about. Something which I've been using more so lately is uh, lemon, bomb ta um, lemon bomb tablets. You can find those at Nootropics Depot and also Valerian Root. That was one that worked pretty well for me. Valerian Root is something like you wouldn't take it and then drive afterwards because it can calm you down. It can make you sleepy. So consider taking the, like, I can't remember what the typical serving size is for the capsules, but consider taking Valerian Root like uh, one to one and a half hours before going to bed. And that should help her out. Is l is, is um, that um, just a, Touch on that point, maybe not for your mom, but for a lot of people out there, they seem to fix their insomnia by actually adjusting their diet. And this was the case for me for um, a long time, just until actually the, the past few years, I had really bad sleep in the sense like I was able to fall asleep, but after maybe five or six hours, I would always wake up and then I had to force myself to sleep the remaining two hours because everybody says you should be getting seven, seven hours of sleep until... I made this one adjustment in my diet. I had that bad sleep issue. And the one adjustment I made was I started moving my carbohydrates more so towards the end of the day. It's also known as carbohydrate backloading. So what that looked like is you don't necessarily need to fast, but instead, but rather than taking, rather than um, having more carbohydrates at the beginning of the day and slowly tapering them off and having a meal prior to bed, which was like, uh, like a protein and a fat source, I added my carbohydrates more so at the end of the day. I thought it would have a bad effect on my physique, but it really didn't. And I was able to get much better sleep. So something to definitely consider. Is L-tyrosine, phosphatidylserine, and alpha-GPC a good stack for focus and a concentration? Yeah, um, that's a super stack. It's super in that it's natural. These are all natural compounds. L-tyrosine is an amino acid. Phosphatidylserine is like a fat alpha GPC. What I like about the stack is this stack can as well work well with stimulants. If you want to add some coffee, perhaps if you're a bit sleep deprived. So I, I really like them. 
A lot of people don't notice the benefit of taking phosphatidylserine, but what phosphatidylserine does is it reduces cortisol levels, and very often it will actually help you with your memory. So it's somewhat misunderstood. Phosphatidylserine, the studies show that it's very effective with seniors, but also for younger individuals. I think it's one of the best supplements out there, um, specifically when it's like the end of the day, you're a bit cranky, a little bit irritable, and you need and you need to get some work done. It does certainly help to like focus and stave off that feeling of um, like having an appetite. Have you tried Newtopia World Domination? Newtopia, it, are, are, if, are, is this the, the company which like customizes a nootropic blend and sends them out to you? I think they like they survey you, they survey you like a hundred questions and then they send out a number of nootropics. Is is that the same one? Because if it is, then perhaps I have. Uh, let me know about that. We can get back to that. Um, L tyrosine seems to only benefit me at the gym. I suppose I think it suppresses cortisol levels. Yeah, um, it could as well be that you're having a higher dose, but that's that's definitely true. I think it helps me at the gym, and then I think it will help you as well if you're fasted or between meals. Like, let's say you have lunch, and then you have a break, like a four-hour break um, until dinner or something like that. Then L-tyrosine, put it right dead in the middle, and and you should be good. And then um, in the gym, like prior to taking it, like, yeah, um, prior to taking it, you may... Sorry, prior to the gym, if you were to take L-tyrosine, you can get away with increasing your dose a little bit. You can consider going up to like a gram, 1.5 grams. It's interesting in that the, in that you mentioned like taking it while you're at the gym because I've noticed the same thing. If I have a longer workout that I want to do, like sometimes on Saturday, I want to get like a two-hour workout in just to make up for uh, bad workouts during the week and I've got some time. So I use L-tyrosine right in the middle of the workout and it seems to help perhaps because you're stressed out, you're, you're fatigued. L-tyrosine is needed. Like there's research showing, for example, that if you're dehydrated, it could help you cognitively function better. So perhaps it's the physical, but more so probably the, um, the actual mental benefits you're getting from it. The long-term centrophenoxine or alpha GPC, that would be alpha GPC by far. Although it could just be because I've used alpha GPC for so long that when I started using um, centrophenoxine, my brain was just accustomed to using alpha GPC and that's what it wanted. I don't think you'll find many people saying that they like um, centrophenoxine more, but centrophenoxine is, is the one that which I first started taking along with paracetam and I did like it back then. Uh, does valerian root work for sleep? Yeah, P Professor Miao, I just mentioned that with the other individual that asked about their mom having insomnia. Would you say Nupep would be a better go, uh, uh, would be a good to stack with caffeine to focus better in the gym? Okay, I'm, I'm actually trying that right now. So I'm, I can comment on that. If, if you send me a message in a few weeks, I'll know it's been about a month. I think it's helping a little bit, but I don't think there's, it's a better alternative to L-tyrosine. The best, if, if, if you definitely want to focus better at the gym, consider like 100 milligrams um, of caffeine along with one gram of L-tyrosine. Or if you can get away with more caffeine, I know a lot of people take 200 milligrams, sometimes 300 milligrams with caffeine. You don't have to adjust the amount of L-tyrosine you're taking. There's not like a ratio of caffeine to tyrosine, but one to 1.5 grams of L-tyrosine, your focus should be really, really good. And you can consider adding um, Alcar as well. That seems to help a lot of people and me as well. Any hair, hair loss with tribulus? I had some thinning from in the hairline area. Not with me. I've also not read a, read much about it. One thing great about Tribulus really is like the um, kind of lack of side effects, which is cool. How do I establish my routine for my stack? David, I'll encourage you to check out a video I've made uh, probably like three to four months ago. It's like how to build a nootropic stack. And the first things first is like identify your goals. Ask yourself, can I stay consistent with this regimen? Because that's what a stack is about. You need to be somebody who actually can take them at specific times during the day in the first place. Otherwise, it's not worth the investment. So watch that video and let me know if you've got further questions. What? Uh, nootropic is the best for memory slash learning, would you say? There would be Bacopa and Paracetam, um, really good nootropics, especially for studying. For Bacopa, I I mean, I wish I had discovered it in my, in my, in my, like my early years when I was studying, like year one or year two of college. It definitely would have helped me out. With Paracetam, I did discover it then. I was using with um, Centrophenoxine. Oh, and I could definitely tell my recall was better. I was absorbing the material easily e uh, easier. And when I stopped taking Paracetam, then it was such like I could clearly tell my memory was like gone or not gone, but not as good as it was typically. What is your thought on now ashwagandha? I don't believe it's the KSM 66. That's the main issue with it. With ashwagandha, you want, if you want to get the benefits, then uh, definitely consider getting one of the extracts. So that would be KSM 66, the um, Sensoral or the Shodan. 
the KSM 66 probably being the best when it comes to productivity, Shodan being the best when it comes to like relaxing. Um, you don't mind some of the demotivational side effects and getting better sleep. I still use about 100, I think it's 120 milligrams of Shodan ashwagandha prior to going to bed. And I have like much deeper sleep. I'm waking up um, a lot more rejuvenated. I, love, I have ADHD, but L-tyrosine and carnitine make me tired. Any recommendations? There's a bunch of do, new new things out there, Carrie. You may want to consider taking. A lot of people like taking Subroxy. Um, it, you can find it on Nootropics Depot. I think it's 100 milligram tablets. As um, On top of that, you may want to consider caffeine and L-theanine. That can work well for you. Carrie, it's helpful to know what's worked for you in the past. Is everything making you tired? Or there has to be one or two things which may be prompted you to want to look into Nootropics. How many different nootropics have you consumed in one day? Ooh, I don't know. Um, do you, if you mean today, maybe like 15 to 20. I have, um, and I'm not like spending all my time every five minutes looking at a nootropic. I have them in like Ziploc bags and I, I've consumed them once in the morning, again in the afternoon, and then once in the evening. It's like past 11 o'clock now, so it's pretty late. Um, I know they were like probably six or seven different nootropics I used three, three times. Hi, if you, had, if you had to choose the best testosterone supplement, what would it be? At this very moment, it would be Tonkat Ali. It would be Tonkat Ali or Tribulus, though. Those two have worked the best for me. One of my favorite products out there to look at is called Test Freak by Pharma Freak. It's a nootropic. It's a, sorry, it's a supplement blend, which has a number of different ingredients out there that um, little by little should help with increasing your testosterone. They've got a good amount of zinc. So ZMA, zinc, magnesium, and uh, vitamin B6, as well as tribulus. I think I've got some fenugreek and other supplements as well. So you may want to consider taking one of those um, testosterone stacks by a reputable brand. And you should notice like a benefit. Most of them are like you take it's um, you take them for 30 days and then you can decide if it made a difference or not. And if it did, then you can go ahead and invest your money in some individual ingredients. But those would be my two. Uh, the Tonkat Alley, I specifically like the 2% urocominones from Nootropics Depot or the Tribulus, which that was my last video. I talked about Tribulus. I take uh, the 1,000, sorry, or 1,000 milligrams or one gram tablets two times a day from Now Foods. Any suggestions for weight loss, particularly toward reducing love handles and increasing face definition? A calorie deficit, that is what's so... So spot reduction is not possible. Spot reduction meaning like actually um, re reducing fat from one particular area of your body. Just know that love, just know that your genes may be such that the last place where you lose fat is your love handles and your, and your face, for example, right? So note that as you keep on leaning out week by week, it will reduce fat in those specific areas eventually. Um, some, something to do if you, if you really have one like, like one really stubborn area, let's say it's your love handles. For men, it's usually um, love handles. For females, it's typically like thighs or their triceps. They seem to carry more fat in their triceps. Something you may want to consider doing to um, specifically attack those fat cells is fasted cardio. What happens is uh, your, your catecholamines are very high and you're able to kind of like get blood flow in them in, in those areas a lot easier and then take fat out of the fat cell and get it out of your system. So try fasted cardio and a supplement you may want to look into is called Yohimbine, which I've talked about in my uh, in a couple other videos. I think I made one like I tr um, before and after using Yohimbine. That was a game changer for me because when I f um, I'm somebody that's not naturally lean. So the first time I dieted down to get abs, I used I was like plateaued. You can say somewhere between twelve to fourteen percent body fat. And then when I reintroduced, um, sorry, when I introduced taking Yohimbine in a specific protocol along with fasted cardio, you could just watch like, you know, the fat from your love handles just melt off. It's really interesting. And you know, it's working because the areas feel warmer. So it's a supplement you can consider looking to your into is your himbine. The way you would use it is at a specific dose that I mentioned, mentioned that video along with caffeine and L-tyrosine. It only works when you're fasted. Um, it does cause a little bit of a mood boost, which is cool, like a bit of euphoria, but um, it can also cause your heart rate to really accelerate. So be careful with that one, although it is a tool to use. Let's say, you know, you already have to be lean. There's no point using your hem bind if you're a male that's over 20% body fat, for example. But if you're something like between, you know, 12 to like a true 12 to 15% body fat, meaning, you know, you could have like a, you know, maybe like a four pack, you can see some stomach definition, then you can start uh, going ahead with your hem bind. And you know that you're around 10% body fat 
or maybe like nine. If, you know, you can see your abs and you have shoulder, like, you know, like the shoulder separation to some extent, perhaps some um, like veins in your arms. But again, people will carry fat in different places. That's just um, having different genetics, right? Do you take your racetam snack at once or take it at separate separate times? I just started a few months ago. Johnny, no, I use it at the same time as I use the adaptogen. So for instance, today, just around six o'clock, I use my favorite racetams, prastam, um, anorastam, oxyrastam, pramorastam. I took um, ashwagandha, bacopa, lion's mane, and alpha GPC. That's an example of how I'd use, I would use it. I don't like to make it too complicated, like use my racetams, use my adaptogens a couple hours after. Um, no point going going about it like that. You would. Use racetam specifically like before work, but keeping in mind that you need to be taking them for a couple of weeks in order to notice the benefit. And for those of you that are new to the racetams, I am not including phenylprostam uh, when I'm when I'm mentioning these because phenylprostam is more like a modafinil. It goes in that modafinil ca category, like emergency nootropics you would only use on those days when you're sleep deprived. You've got like a lot of work to do or I know some instances when I love using, I love using phenylprostam or, or modafinil or when I'm traveling, you just get through it a lot easier. You're in a better mood and you're able to be productive. Do something, do, do something good and useful on your plane. Best newt for making you more social and engaging. They would be either aniracetam or lion's mane. Lion's mane more so if you're kind of, um, if you need to be in a good mood in the first place, maybe you want to be a bit more curious with people. It's, it's, it seems to work more so on like improving your mood, whereas the use of anorastam can more so help you with um, verbal fluency, asking better questions, having energy to conversate for a long time. So lion's mane more so when it comes to mood and anorastam more so when it comes to like actually, you know, like cognitive function and being sharper in conversation. Should you take um, modafinil and acetylcholine at the same time? Yeah, if, if you were to take modafinil, then you definitely do want to take some choline. So nothing wrong with taking it at the same time, but along... Um, but along with doing that, make sure you're using choline throughout the course of the day. So on days when I would use modafinil, for example, which I've only, um, the last time I used modafinil was one week ago. I used um, alpha GPC, I think three times during that day and felt better and felt better and didn't get like the um, typical headache that it's usually accompanied with. Which nootropics feel most like lemon balm? That would be magnolia bark. Uh, magnolia bark extract and uh, valerian root that I mentioned earlier. It's very, they're, they're both very calming. What is the best modafinil stack for studying? Ooh, that's a good question. Uh, the best modafinil, that's the cool thing about modafinil. If you use it to study, you don't really need honestly much of a stack because you're able to maintain this level of focus. And it makes it such that when you're reading uh, under the influence of modafinil, you really enjoy it because you're picking up material so, so much faster. Like if you've taken modafinil and you don't believe me, just grab a book and watch how fast you can get through, through the material and just be just as engaged after like reading 20 pages um, than, than typically. And also it seems to make you write faster. It's pretty neat that way. So uh, let's talk about nootropics that can go well, like accompanied with monafinil. Those would be um, alpha GPC, acetylcholine, L-theanine, if you find monafinil to be a little bit a little bit too stimulating. And it's important to really avoid other stimulants. Like I have not found that taking monafinil along with caffeine really helps me too much with productivity. More so, modafinil and caffeine, I would maybe use pre-workout, but not much otherwise. Water retention, water retention, water retention supplement. I don't know if that's a question. Um, got a nice comment from Dr. Vinny Boombats. Most anxiety is, is related to having a lack of self-control. That's true. Are you still using Prastam? Yep, I'm using Prastam. Can ashwagandha help with a presentation? If not, what would you suggest for nervousness during presentation? Ashwagandha, yeah, I think it could definitely help. I think L-theanine can also help, like, you know, stage fright, performance. I've made a video actually on that. It's uh, new, uh, nootropics for stage fright. I didn't mention ashwagandha specifically, but that's one that can help. And lion's mane will help you be, like, less attached to the outcome, make you enjoy the presentation more so and focus on that. Uh, you'll find that helpful. What helped you most with ADHD? You probably won't like the answer, but the answer would be exercise. Although I don't really think I had ADHD. Yes, I've used Concerta. I've used Vyvanse. I've used Ritalin. Perhaps you can say it was a misdiagnosis, but what helps most is just having a good, healthy lifestyle. I exercise every day, even though I shouldn't be because of overtraining. I take fish oil. I take a multivitamin. And the racetams really help. I'll say, if anything, maybe Pramoracetam and uh, maybe Paracetam. Oh, and sorry. Um, Earlier, when I was talking about my new um, nootropic stack, I mentioned seven or eight nootropics. One, there's probably a couple I missed, but one I definitely missed was Nupept. 
Why does Nootropics Depot Tonkat Alley make me want to sleep all day? That's the way I felt before I started taking it with a meal. So Dusty, be curious to know if you're taking it with a meal. Okay, Jose says yes. Um, with respect to Nootopia domination. So funny enough, I did the uh, Nootopia. I went on their site. I mean, no, they they asked me a number of questions. I answered the questions. They sent me like a huge box of Nootropics. And right now I, I've emailed them back asking what the caffeine content is for the nootropics. So I'm still waiting on that. So yes, I'm, I, I mean, I have all the products. Um, Nootopia is pretty cool in that they kind of customize a nootropic stack for you and then they give it to you. Let's just hope that they have good customer service and I can get some answers because I want to know the caffeine content on the supplements that I'm taking. Of course, I don't really think it's a good idea for anyone to consume more than 400 milligrams of caffeine per day. And I'm currently between 300, 300 to 400, um, milligrams it's crazy that you're streaming i was literally thinking about your videos earlier that good well um i hope that's because you've been consuming a lot of the content there's nothing wrong with binge watching my channel guys even um even to date when i don't know much about a nootropic and i haven't taken it for a couple of years i go back and watch one of my videos because i may have discussed it and done the research on it back then so the faster you watch my videos the faster you'll educate yourself or like you know Put it on in the car when you're driving or something and just listen to the audio. I try to make the videos like that, that you don't, that you don't always need a visual. And uh, let me know when you're watching my stuff, guys. It makes me it makes me feel good. Definitely gives me some positive support to keep going. Um, any advice about something natural, maybe herbs, that would truly help um, with severe anxiety? That's interesting. The, um, so ashwagandha is probably going to be the best one for you, especially when you mention severe. The two forms of ashwagandha, which would be best when it comes to, you can say severe things, maybe maybe you're just going through a bad a bad period. There would be the sensual form and the shodan form. Very, very effective. With L-theanine and the majority of uh, other supplements out there that are going to help with anxiety is they kind of act like a bandage and that they'll be helpful maybe for the day or maybe for a few hours. But then what? You're kind of back in your problem. Whereas ashwagandha will get kind of like deep in the situation um, maybe shift your perspective a little bit, make you a bit more relaxed and get you out of your head, which is good. Um, just join. Can you briefly talk about modafinil? Yeah, I'd be happy to modafinil. What's, what's got to gain a lot of popularity out there is it seems like an alternative to a lot of the ADHD meds because it, um, or a safer alternative supposedly, because it doesn't come with the crash associated, like the irritability at the end of the day. And Dave Asprey and some other crazy people have taken it for years. And after getting off of it, they've mentioned that their brain functions just fine. So that's what it's for. It's for shift work, sleep disorder for people who like work nights and they seem to you know, just have their you know systems backwards. What it helps with mostly is focus. Also mood um, definitely makes it such that you don't need breaks during the course of the day. It makes you enjoy stuff like reading, studying. You want to be productive. You're I think that the best thing about modafinil, though, is your increased ambition. You feel so much drive. You do not want to pay any attention to things outside of work. You'll lose your interest in sports. Um, if you like, you know, if you like spending time with girls, you'll lose. You know, you won't really care about girls, for instance. You just want to do those high priority tasks and make money. So it's pretty cool. How do you recommend winding down at night after taking our modafinil early in the a.m.? That's a great question, Louis. So on um. On days, for example, when I would use something like modafinil or armodafinil, I would not actually use ashwagandha during the course of the day. But then at the end of the day, I'll use some ashwagandha. I'll use something to relax me a little bit. I'll use some bacopa, for example. And I would definitely avoid stimulants outside of that time. And you could consider having like a high carbohydrate meal. As a result of eating high carbohydrates, it'll increase your serotonin levels. And when you increase your serotonin levels, typically it'll make you a little bit tired um, and should relax you a little bit. So nothing wrong with having like a big bowl of pasta or something around there. You have a good anti-aging supplement to try. Yes, Artin, consider trying alpha lipoic acid, um, alpha lipoic acid. There's also a more potent uh, form called R alpha, alpha lipoic acid. So um, research that. It's also got a neat neat use in that you're able to more efficiently shuttle nutrients to your muscle cells through a through a process called GLUT4, GLUT4. So what happens is when you use um, alpha lipoic acid, let's say before a big meal you're more likely to use that meal towards building muscle rather than be uh, rather than that meal being stored in your fat cells. For L-tyrosine, would you say the powder version would digest into and get into my system faster than capsules? I feel this effect when caffeine, when I drink it, it's faster than capsules. Okay, the answer is yes, but it's only slightly. You will find that. And um, I don't typically do it because with the L-tyrosine powder, for whatever, whatever reason, it more often comes with a headache. 
don't hear much on L dopa for natural dopamine. Do you know why? That's a great question. It's because it's not in it's not necessarily a healthy practice to like artificially increase your dopamine levels, similar to serotonin, because there's two there's you can take something like mucunia purines to increase your dopamine levels. And similarly, if you wanted to increase your serotonin levels, you can take something like 5-HTP, which in theory, okay, sure, it makes sense, but you wouldn't want to use it day by day. You'd much rather find ways to naturally increase your dopamine levels, exercise, make sure you have a, a diet that's rich in dopamine, uh, dopamine um, food filled with dopamine and serotonin to begin with, which is going to happen if you have a good balance of carbohydrates, protein, and fat. So that's pretty much the reason why I've experimented taking L-DOPA on days when I'm a bit tired. It hasn't really done anything. So mucunipurians, I'm pretty disappointed on. Um, although it's interesting that it isn't quality of mine and I see it in some other nootropic blends. May as well take something like L-tyrosine, converts directly into dopamine and you actually feel it. You feel the focus. You definitely feel like the effects of, okay, I want to do this work because I believe there is some sort of reward at the end of it. Uh, do you have any experience on fasoracetam? Funny you say that because I just added it actually to my stack um, yesterday. So we'll see how that goes. But the last time I used fast, no, the last two times I used fasoracetam for a few months, I didn't really notice any sort of benefit, but I've, I've just added that one and I've added coloracetam. Uh, what have you noticed from paracetam? I've been taking it for 10 days and haven't noticed much. What I noticed was my memory was better. And I was also more inclined to want to do work during the course of the day, um, more focused, you know, like those little decisions you have in the day where it's like, um, should you, should you focus on your work or should you do something else and just goof off for just a second? You're, it's pretty easy to say no to goofing off and just focus on your work. You are, um, more aligned with your goals. Your goals are top of mind. So that's the one thing I noticed with it. But sometimes you notice press time more when you actually take time off of it. So, um, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Coyote. Ki Coyote. If I, I hope you have some really in intense kind of work where you can be objective about it and uh, know whether or not it's working. Because if that's the case, then use brass time for a couple months. And then after a couple weeks, when you drop it, you should see some uh, like, a you know, you should see a noticeable difference between your like your results. Brass time per day. I think uh, two to three grams per day is good man look at that physique geez rocky handsome man that's hard work <laughs> respect much respect what nootropics could help with the stutter i have no idea man i have like i've stuttered my whole life i had it growing up and it wasn't nootropics that really changed it or maybe made it worse or better it was just time and practicing breathing maybe that's something propranolol for stage fright the <laughs> um i've not tried it I'm, it's something I'm curious about and I, I don't think it's, it's a healthy practice because it looks super addictive, but I was on a podcast recently. No, I was listening to a podcast uh, where some entrepreneurs were talking about things they use in stage fright. And this was definitely one of them. Um, don't know too much about it. I'll be studying it more, but I think st stay away from it. It's like stage fright. Listen, it can be overcome with practice. Do a lot of presentations. If you have a stage of a hundred people practice said practice at home with your family first in front of five people, right? Then practice in, t in front of 20 people, maybe do a zoom call practice in front of um, 60 people you get, you know, you'll build that natural skill. It's just a muscle that needs to be built and developed. Uh, best nootropics for energy. I could talk about some of my favorites specifically for energy. There would be phenylprostam. They would be um, modafinil. I really like mixing caffeine and L-tyrosine. Note, I said L-tyrosine. I did not say L-theanine because L-theanine will be relaxing. L-tyrosine will be energizing and it will increase your focus in most cases. And then something when it comes to energy, more so in the context of like in the middle of the day when you're a little bit tired, you're a little bit fatigued, definitely consider taking some rhodiola rosea. Um, rhodiola rosea has been responsible for me really, really, really increasing my income because it will make it such that the second half of your day, you have just as much energy as the first half of the day. And you'll feel really good. You'll feel really good with that. What are the, uh, best nootropics for motivation? Okay. We've covered that. We've talked about that quite a bit. Enjoying the live stream so far. Good. Sahel. I'm, I'm glad you are a uh, quick question. Hello from Texas. Hello, Armando. Quick question. I'm a software engineer and sometimes I feel I need to focus for two to four hours. 
any recommendations? This would be dependent on your work because it's four hours. I mean, it really depends if it's two hours different than four hours, but something to consider. Take something to start working in the first place, caffeine and L-theanine. If you're somebody that maybe is just going to be behind, you know, like uh, behind a computer, then you may not need the physical energy. So go with the L-theanine rather than the, than the L-tyrosine. And then after a couple of hours, when you're starting to feel a bit of fatigue, consider adding rhodiola rosea. And I don't think it would be helpful for you to use a bunch of the nootropics we talked about for anxiety. More so look at the racetams to help you with focus, to help you solve problems in a better fashion. And if you were to tell me more, a little bit more about your work, then I can, I can better say. And guys, I think that's a, that's a wrap now. Um, if you have further questions, then drop them in the comments and I'll, I'll try adding timestamps. Give me about a, like an hour or so, and you'll see them. So you have a, you know, if you were to watch this from, um, watch the, the replay, excuse me, then you can fast forward or rewind to whichever question is pertinent to you. Don't forget to drop a like. I appreciate all of you. And if you'd like to partner with me at eXp Realty, I'm a real estate agent. I'm looking for other fellow agents across the globe where we can sell homes together. We can uh, study our scripts together. We can all grow in a similar trajectory. And I look forward to seeing you all next time. Thanks again for your participation, guys. Cheers.